y'all. I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today I have a Traveler's Notebook process video for you. This is my Fall Faves Traveler's Notebook, and I'm going to work on my second entry, and today I'm going to be working on my favorite food for the fall, which is chili. So I have a couple of pictures of some chili that I made this weekend, and I pulled out some more Felicity Jane supplies because I think that that is going to be the direction that I stick with for this particular traveler's notebook. So I'm excited to kind of document it. And then I think I'm going to include the recipe or at least the ingredient list for the chili over here, just as kind of, you know, a way to document the favorite chili that I love to make every fall. So I will put you guys on fast forward. The supplies that I'm using for the most part are going to be just from my stash from Felicity Jane. So um, I don't know that they are in stock, but you can certainly go check out the Felicity Jane website to see what you can find. They have some gorgeous pieces over there. All right, I'll put you guys on fast forward. Let's go. All right, I'm starting out by going through this big pile of scraps and looking for a few pieces that might be a good jumping off point. I found another fall piece of paper, but I used it on the previous spread, so I kind of wanted to change it up. I love, love, love this wood paper. This is going to be perfect. So I'm going to use it as the background for the page where the pictures are going to be. This is my famous chocolate chili. So it is so good. Yes, it has chocolate in it. It is delicious. There is nothing better to me in the fall and in the winter than a big crock pot full of chili and then I also would have to add football to that so chili and football really just screams fall to me so I definitely wanted to document it for this page I'm going to keep it pretty simple which is kind of the whole mo for this particular traveler's notebook really focusing on the pictures and the storytelling I'm going to play with layers so I have a few of those Felicity Jane journaling cards picked out and then I'm also going to go through the embellishments I actually have used a ton of my Felicity Jane fall embellishments I don't have a bunch but I do have some fun words I chose the word season and then as I kind of go through I find a few different ones that I like one that says comfy so comfy season because I think comfort food when I think of that and then the last one is taking this moment or something like that I'm making the most of today I think that's what it was so um I love, so the whole process of making the chili really starts the night before when you have to soak beans and then you put it all together in the crock pot in the morning and it just cooks on low all day long. It is delicious. It's just, it's so good. It's so good, you guys. And you're going to see the ingredients. I'll also link to the Pinterest recipe that I got the inspiration from. I change it up a little bit and add some beans to this particular chili, but it really is delicious. Whenever I am doing a double page spread, I look for ways to kind of connect the two pages. And I'm going to use this dark green paper to do that. I'm just going to tear along the paper until it kind of naturally descends. And then that will go over both pages. So I'll trim off this branding strip at the bottom and then move these pieces so that the green paper goes and connects both sides of the paper just a little bit, just so that it you know, brings them together. And then I'll actually use a few other torn pieces of the green grid paper to add layers to the photos that are on the left side of the spread. When you are doing simpler spreads, it's really all about the details, meaning this one isn't bright and colorful. It doesn't have a ton of ephemera on it. So I'm really working on adding in these layering details. I, again, I love the torn paper look. It looks very organic and natural to me. Um, so I like including it. And so I'm just adding little bits of that green grid back there just so that um, you get that pop of the green in multiple places across the page. And I'm going to use that same torn paper technique on the photos. So I have the journaling cards to add just a little pop of color behind it. Obviously, there is a lot of color in the photos because of the red chili. And of course, Frito scoops because I think that is the best way to eat chili. I'm a huge fan of like a Frito pie kind of feel. So it's almost like I don't need a spoon for my chili because I'm just going to use the scoops anyway. But I'm breaking up the boxiness by adding some torn paper along a couple edges of each 
photo. So I went with that green and then I'm looking to see what other pieces I can add and this mustard yellow is the correct color. So I'll just tear a little bit. Again, I'm not really worried about the pattern on these pages because really I just want that glimpse of color and you'll see that as I add it into the top photo as well. So adding just a little bit peeking out and I'll trim it off on the side, trim it off right here and then layer it with the journaling card. And this is a great way to use your journal journaling cards. If you have been getting three by four cards and maybe you don't do project life or you don't do card scrapbooking, then you can use these to mat your pictures. You can use them for layering. They're still wonderful things to have in your stash because I find them really useful in a lot of different ways. I just don't typically do um, pocket page journaling. For the top of this picture, I actually wanted to do some pink, but I didn't really want it to be solid. So I kind of struggled. I ended up finding a really pretty kind of plaid print that had some pink. It had a, it had a fall feel for sure. Not that one. I'm looking through my stash. It's hard sometimes to use scraps, especially patterned scraps. Even though Felicity Jane scraps are pretty neutral, because I was going for a specific fall color palette, it, it became a little bit more challenging. So I think next time, I think I'm going to pull papers before I even start. Just papers that go together and maybe we'll do like an unusual fall color palette. I think that would be pretty as well. So I will add this little torn edge over here and actually I ended up pulling it around to the top as well. I'm trying to see if I want to add any more layers right here. Right there. I'm going to pull it. You'll see me adhere it to the bottom and then I end up changing my mind because of the way the pictures are going to layer together on the page. You actually won't end up seeing that bottom piece at all. So I will change that up and move it to the top in just a bit. But let me get the journaling card with the buffalo plaid kind of peeking out from behind. And now I'm noticing, yeah, you're not going to see that paper at all. So I will take it out very carefully and then reposition it at the top just so you get a little more pink of that particular pattern. So have those down. I will go ahead and add adhesive to the back of both photos and get those on the page because those are the biggest elements. Um, just like always when I'm working in a traveler's notebook, I work from big to small. So you saw I put the biggest pieces of paper for the background and then the other large elements, which would be the picture clusters. And now I'll be adding the different words. So the top one says make today count. And then in the bottom, I will layer in comfy seasons over here on the right side, I decided instead of writing the whole recipe out, really it's a crock pot recipe. So I'm just going to write out the list of ingredients because that kind of lets you know um, what goes into that chili. At this point, I'm just auditioning some different ephemera pieces that might go around my page. I found a star, but it turns out the other stars that go with it were really more of spring colors, not what I was looking for. And so I opt for a heart, which is perfect because I love this chili. So I found three different hearts that I'm going to layer and I decide to go ahead and pop them up. I'm not really wanting to add a lot of dimension to this particular traveler's notebook, but I did want those hearts to kind of stand out. So I have these small little pop-up adhesive dots from American Crafts and I'm going to use them to put on the back of my hearts to adhere them down, but still give them a little bit of oomph so that they stand out from the picture and it adds just a little bit of dimension, not a ton, just a little bit over there. I had, I struggled a little bit with getting the backing off of these. All right, those three are down and now I'll just put down the words because I know exactly where I want them to go. And this one conveniently covers up my hand, which I wasn't really interested in having in the picture anyway. So um, got all of those down. Now I'm taking my attention over to, oh, I forgot a little bit more washi tape because you can't have enough little grid washi tape. Like I said, when you're working in a traveler's notebook and you have these small uh, layouts and these more minimal layouts, this is pretty minimal for me, um, all the details matter. So those little bits of torn washi will also serve to bring the two sides together because I will add them over on the right side. So this will be where my list of ingredients goes. And I'm looking at this washi. This is washi I have pulled for the fall, for a few fall projects I'm doing. And I'm going to tear the gold washi or the mustard yellow and then I'm going to layer on top of it this kind of maroon color because that maroon color is peeking out from the card that's on the left so I thought I should probably try to include it 
somewhere else. So I have it peeking out right here and I think it looks nice against the pink. And then I'm also going to layer one up at the top, but I need more of the mustard yellow as well, tearing it apart just because it was a little too bulky on its own. And I, again, I was going for the torn look. I really like the torn look and then layering these two together and that looks great. All right, next I'm wanting to add a title to this page, which is gonna say Chocolate Chili. So I'm gonna pull out all of my Black Alpha from Felicity Jane, Black Alpha stickers. I have a lot of different shapes and sizes. I wasn't sure what complete sets I had or if I had the right number of letters. I was considering that perhaps I would have to kind of mix and match, but I just pulled them all out of their container. I do keep my Felicity Jane Alpha separate from the rest of mine just because I think it functions well with Felicity Jane supplies and doesn't always play well with other supplies, if that makes sense. So pulling those out and then I do have enough to write out chocolate chili in two different fonts, but I kind of like the two different fonts because I think it really emphasizes the title even more. So I like to spell it backwards just because spacing is not my forte and I was a little bit nervous. I was putting them down crooked and then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go for the crooked thing. Like we're just going to emphasize the fact that I meant to have these be crooked and we're going to really play that up. So chocolate chili. And then I found some super cute um, embellishments. These are kind of like enamel stickers and they are X's and little plus signs. And I thought they really brought in the dark green. So I'll use those on several parts of the page. Again, repeating elements on both sides so that it brings the whole spread together. The last thing I will do is write out all of the ingredients and then the spread will be done. Thank you so much for watching today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I will link Felicity Jane down below. Like I said, a lot of these are just in my stash, so I'm not sure that they're in stock. I'll also link the chocolate chili recipe and I always get questions about how I print my pictures, so all of that information is down below as well. I want to give a huge shout out to my scrappy YouTube members. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in finding out more about scrappy YouTube membership, then make sure to click the join button or check the link in the description box below. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.